Hey everyone, Dev here. Welcome to Dev Horizon Cyberfusion Overview. So, it seems like it's finally the day that this game is officially launching on the store, cause previously it was on App Lab. And that's pretty much the reason why I did not check it out up until now. I mean, I am known, kind of. From the prequel of Death Horizon series, it was my first ever horror game I've played pretty much. And it just set the tone for the future of my channel, which I'll be forever grateful. Now it's time to check out the sequel or uh, some sort of a spin-off. So Death Horizon Cyber Fusion is a physics-driven combat game where you're getting transported into the far future of cybernetic technology, fusing yourself with robotic attachments and body parts, and become a walking human destruction machine. Going into it, I'm not totally sure what I expected, nor realized what's the actual premise of the game. On the first glance, it appears to be a physics playground, then you have some roguelike mechanics with unlocks and maps being generated randomly. But then you have certain tasks to fulfill in certain sections, so it kinda takes a little bit of everything from every genre. To be honest, I did not expect much, primarily because I remember in the prequel, most of the features there were pretty outdated, coming from the nowadays standards. I was very much impressed by what the devs achieved so far. It's not even comparable to what was happening before, moreover it is like an entity on its own, where the engine used for combat, locomotion and all of that is pretty unique on its own, like across a lot of titles I've tried so far. I don't think I've seen anything like it, that it kinda hangs around in the middle between pure realistic setting or just pure arcade stuff. It is fun to play in that regard, there are certain things I would adjust, mostly for the comfortability and accessibility of the player. If it's with the holster freedom or polishing out certain interactions, but what's happening now is rather solid. I don't know what's gonna be in the future content-wise, because it's not the same experience as the prequel's campaign story. But I'll be on the lookout for the updates, maybe we'll do some gameplay clips, but it's nice to see the devs being back on board and that there is progress going on, which I always appreciate. Let's go step into the lab. Hello and welcome to Horizon Lab, the pinnacle of neural cybernetic enhancements. I'm Cynthia from the support team. I know that the first working day can be challenging, so I'll be helping you with the onboarding process. Looks snazzy. That's what I'm saying, like, old school developers know what's up with the resolution levels and just good texture quality. It's not that hard. But immediately I want to go to the options. Perfect. As you know, we in Horizon Lab believe that humanity's true potential can be unlocked with cybernetic enhancement. So let's start with upgrading your hands. Place both of your hands on these areas, firmly grip them, and hold them using the grab buttons. Oh, there's like a linear of a rendering, even though the texture quality doesn't change. That's interesting. These modules will greatly increase your power. Go to the next room to see it in action. Every hand has its own statistics? Let's test your cyber implants. Press and hold both grab and trigger buttons to activate your modules. Now kill him. As Daphne. A different zombie model coming from the prequel. Much scarier and like the definitions of the bone structure. 
Jesus. <laughs> That's intense. Prosthetics usage drains your energy. You can check energy status in your vitals on the hands hollow display. To refill your energy, you need to kill enemies without using your prosthetic. I'll show you soon enough. Your prosthetics are equipped with a magnetic pull module. Simply reach your hand towards the object, hold the grab button, and do a quick pulling motion. Don't forget to release the grab button and press it again to catch the object. That's very smooth. It's like a day and night difference coming from the first game's physics engine. And there seem to be some magnetic force going on. Oh. <laughs> Good, let's move to the next room. To the left is the energy blade. It's a pretty fun and reliable way to refill your energy. Good, kill the second one or proceed to the next room. Oh, sorry, <laughs> what was happening? Take it and attach it to your left thigh or try it on these two zombies. <laughs> wow. It seems like there's a delay between picking stuff as well. It's too far from my own body. Like I really need to put pressure and turn the They all have the same structure though. Wonder if there will be more variety. Well, it's a very interesting... I'm gonna repeat myself, engine. I don't think I've ever seen something like that. It's not like completely realistic. Something in between. Kill him. Energy blade or prosthesis modules, the choice is yours. What the? The hell is he throwing? That's also an interesting behavioral pattern. Nice job. Proceed to the next room. See that red button? Don't touch it just yet. It will spawn a deadly drone that will try to shoot you. Luckily, you have an energy blade that can deflect the projectiles. Also, you can press the right stick to give yourself a little dose of adrenaline. It will improve your reflexes. Ready? Now press the red button. In Fates, we had the same mechanic, right? room or stay here and practice a little more that's fun congratulations you've completed the tutorial and now you're a certified collector manager it's time for your first real mission but let's patch you up before that go to the nearest terminal activate it and use the syringe to heal yourself step into the elevator when you're ready I'm impressed so far. Welcome to the exhibition. Here you can see our arsenal, cyber implants, and the enemies you might encounter. Take your time, and when you're ready, proceed to the door. Ew. I 
I don't like that. <laughs> oh, it's just to show off. I'm gonna have it close to me. <laughs> don't forget to check your map from time to time. It will show your surroundings and your current objective. Simply lift your hand to your eyes to activate the map. Check your objective and proceed to the next room. Wait, what this game is really about? Nothing storewise, right? The intruders have tampered with the generator. Clear them out first, and then we'll focus on repairs. <laughs> I love finding out the box. But I feel like throwing mechanic is not finished. Like balls coming at my face. <laughs> that sounded weird. I can't put it on my right hip. What about this point? Let's move on to repairs. One of the generator switches has been turned off. Find it and turn it back on. Is there some point to the gameplay though? I mean, I enjoy it. Perfect. The generator is working again. Our job here is done. Proceed to the next elevator. Just follow the yellow line on the floor. She didn't explain me the climbing and stuff. There's a scan terminal to your right. Activate it to receive additional credits. A match. Welcome to our hub. Here you can rest, change your prosthetic, or upgrade your equipment. Speaking of which, you have enough credits to buy a new weapon. Check out the store in the armory. So this is some kind of roguelike scenario, I suppose, right? You get better stuff and then... Here's how the equipment store works. First, use your pointer to click on the sidearm. Or simply pick it up with your hand. Now click on the buy button to complete the transaction. Take the gun from the wall. Now take the magazine and insert it into the gun. Now this part is important. You need to holster your weapon to update your loadout. Secure the gun on your right leg. That's it, now you're good to go. You can test your weapons at shooting range and in the training room. Additionally, you can test here any unlocked weapons and attachments, even if you don't own them yet. Just pick them from the wall and return them when you're done. And if you have weapons and attachments that you don't need right now, you can store them in the armory. Just place them on the wall to update your loadout. Take some time to practice, and when you're ready, Enter the elevator to launch your next mission. Yeah, now I'm seeing because specific weaponry is locked in certain holsters, so that's a first. And I'm not sure if it's the correct dynamic, but we shall see. I want no more combat because 
it felt very pleasant in general. And all the stuff will be unlocked. Okay then. What's the ammo situation? What the? <laughs> I'm discovering mechanics. Ready. Ah, that's a weak spot actually. Them head movement. They still have the prequelish movement, so it's not all lost. <laughs> this is fog. Huh? No break. Where are they coming from? I just don't like the fact that I need to reach to my hip to shift it, but that's just the load that I have. And the katana is much more efficient. Can I store it? I don't think I have any bag or whatever. I'll just carry it. Ah, when you hold something, the map doesn't show. I need to clearly move.
I would really like to see the map though. <laughs> this is just a break. Overall, there's a lot going on in terms of the actual physics and like combat mechanics. It is heaps and valleys, an upgrade from the prequel experience, although in a completely different direction, I feel like. Like this is not a game that focuses on the story or anything of the sort, but rather pure and flank. <laughs> Carnage and mayhem of it all. I don't know if it's necessarily something for me nowadays, but I do appreciate that the devs tried something different, but still a little bit in the same realm of Zombie Land. This is one of a kind in terms of the features. I don't know what's necessarily the point besides the playground setting, though, per usual, like with this series, I'll be on the lookout. Pay for wise, not totally sure, but we'll see.